what's going on y'all so this past weekend i was out fishing and i started to get a little off balance in my kayak i opened up my hatch i looked down in and i had a lot of water coming in i actually had to bail myself out three times trying to get back to the ramp um and i was about five miles from the ramp but go ahead and show you all this little crack i have right here so <clears throat> Right there next to the scupper hole, you see that little crack running right there, right? It looks little right now, but whenever I sit in a kayak, it kind of, you know, obviously the weight uh, spreads it open. It's it's pretty wide little gap. So the, the kayak is under warranty, and I have another hole coming, but until I get that, which it, it could be a while, it could be a month, and I don't want to be without a kayak. I'm going to go ahead and weld this up, fix it, and um, show y'all how it's done. So here we go. All right, so step one is to use denatured alcohol and just wipe down real good, prep the area. You don't want any kind of dirt, sand, grime, anything like that um, that might interfere with a good weld. So we're going to go ahead and clean the area now. All right, guys, so now that we got the area semi-clean, um, kind of degreased and whatnot, we're going to move on to step two. Uh, you're going to need a drill and a 1 8 inch drill bit, or at least that's the drill bit I'm using. You just want a small drill bit. And all we're going to do is we're going to drill on both ends of the cracks. Now, we have to drill holes on both ends of the cracks so we can disrupt the, the route that that crack is moving. Otherwise, if we start to manipulate to add heat, that stress on that crack could continue that same line. So all we want to do is drill on both sides, which is going to basically end the route of that crack. All right, y'all, now that we got the holes drilled, okay, we, we, we stopped the crack from being able to continue to uh, work its path. Now we need to lay down a good surface to get a good bond uh, to make sure our weld uh, sticks and have something to secure itself to. So what we're going to use here is a Dremel tool. I just got a little rock on there to create a bevel. Um, and all we're going to be doing is creating a little channel. You want kind of like a V-shaped channel coming through there uh, to give a good uh, area for your weld to be able to stick. <laughs> y'all we're ready for step four um and that is to go ahead and start welding we've prepped our area uh we created our little channel we got a nice spot for the weld to be able to stick uh so we're going to go ahead and get into the weld things you will need for the welding process okay um your kayak is made of hdpe high density polyethylene or something of that nature um therefore you have to use that type of plastic if you use a pvc or any other type of plastic, it is not going to bond, it's not going to stick, and it's not going to work. Um, so make sure that you use HDPE. Five-gallon buckets are made of HDPE, at least most of them are. So try there. Those are pretty cheap. Um, but what you want to do is cut out little strips of that plastic. Um, and then from there, you're going to need channel locks to hold that plastic whenever you're heating it up, obviously, so you're not burning your hands and whatnot. You just hold it. Um, that way, when you're using your heat gun to heat it up, you're not burning your hand. Um, so you're gonna need a heat gun, strip of HDPE, channel locks, and a flathead screwdriver. So getting into it on your heat gun, do not use the high setting, keep it in low, Take your time with it. Don't try to rush it. If you overheat your kayak and blow a hole through it, you're gonna create a whole nother mess. So make sure you keep it on low, take your time, and um, make sure you do it right. So.
All right, so we just about got this to where it's ready to uh, start melting and laying it down. So now we want to just get our channel right there where we're going to start. And all we want to do on your kayak is just get that plastic to where it starts to get shiny. Okay, you do not want to melt your kayak. Once it starts to get shiny, you'll be able to uh, start blending your, your plastics. Now that we've laid it down in there, we just want to take that screwdriver, kind of stir those plastics around in there. Okay, mix them up uh, back and forth, back and forth, plugging up them areas. All right, we've laid our plastic down in there. We just want to heat this back up, make sure we're blending it real good, mixing it around in there, and then smoothing it out. So we have laid down our weld. It looks good. Um, I don't have any problem with that. I feel like the gap has been sealed up and no more water is going to leak. Um, and most people stop at this process right here. I know I have in the past, but due to the fracture being at the strupper hole and on top of the kayak to where when I'm shifting around moving my weight, it's causing that, that kayak to flex and bow there's a, a high possibility that I'll be on the water and that hole is going to open back up and I'll have the same problem. So, what I'm going to do is let this cool off and I'm going to add an extra step. I'm going to put a metal mesh right there and then I'm going to put another layer of weld over the top of that mesh. So that'll be the final step in the process. I'm going to let this cool and I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, we've given it about five minutes or so. Uh, touched it, felt on it a little bit, and it's cooled down, so we're ready to move on to the next step. So what I have here is just a little bit of wire mesh, okay, screen uh, patching material. Um, this is a little too big, so all I'm going to do is use regular scissors. I'm going to cut me a strip of it, and uh, I'm going to heat it back down, mash it down in there, kind of press it down in there, and then I'm going to lay another strip of... Uh, of HDP over the top of it and that should wrap everything up so go ahead and get into it go ahead and just test it make sure that's going to be a good piece right there looks like it's going to work out so all right go ahead and get our heat gun back on it right Go ahead and start heating that area back up, just moving back and forth, heating that back up. Getting it to where it just shows us that glossy, shiny finish again. All 
Right. Hold that mesh down right there and see if I can't press it down in there as I'm applying heat. There we go. All right, so I'm just using that screwdriver to heat that area and press that mesh down into that plastic. There we go. All right, so we have laid our mesh down in there. Now we just want to come back over the top with some more plastic. So we're going to go ahead and melt this down a little bit. I'm not afraid to turn up the high heat on this because it's not going to, I mean, if we overheated it, it's not a big deal. Obviously, when you're putting the heat to your hole, you overheat that, it's a major deal. So never do high heat on your hole. Always keep it low. But I'm going to go ahead and put high heat on this little strip of plastic right here. y'all that is it that completes our weld um you know is it the most beautiful weld in the world probably not but i can guarantee you this thing's gonna hold up um i'm not gonna use the strippers for a strupper card anymore because the the well or the strupper holes the integrity there has kind of been damaged a little bit but it's not going to take on any more water and I'm pretty confident that when I'm sitting in my seat, it's not going to reopen that fracture. Um, so here's the final product and that's pretty much it. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure y'all hit that like button, comment with any questions or maybe something you would do different, anything like that. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye.